Hola, buenos días. ¿Cómo le va? ¿Todo marchando bien? Oh, gracias, Señor. All is well with me today. I want to thank the Lord. I want to thank the Lord. I pray you have mucho paz. Paz. Peace. Peace. The peace of God today. Come on, let's claim that from the Lord. Let's confess anything that would block God's grace doing it. Lord, give us your peace. Give my heart peace today. Even as I'm reading these verses. Peace. That's more than just an absence of, of um, agitation. It's that blessing of God. Well-being spiritually. So, we're reading in Hebrews 12. Imagine we're getting, we started at chapter 1, verse 1, and we are now in the next to the last chapter. Chapter 12, verse 15. 14 was yesterday, remember? Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Verse 15, see to it that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Now there's a mouthful. See to it. Make sure now, come on, come on, that no one, not just you and me, but anyone we know, show concern that no one falls short of the grace of God. The grace of God is there, but what if we don't appropriate it? Israel had all these promises from God in the Old Covenant, which we're really going to focus on in this chapter, the difference between the Old and the New. It's going to shock some of you. So now the grace of God is being offered. Don't come short of it. Don't live on your own strength. Don't let the flesh take over. So grace of God is offered, but you have to have the faith to receive it. You have to open. You have to possess it. Like the land God gave Israel. He gave it to them. But they had to go and possess it. No, he gave it to them. No, they had to possess it. So let's not fall short of the grace of God. And look what can happen. And that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. Now the commentators differ slightly on this. Some see it as some bitter root of any kind of sin. You fall short of the grace of God and some sin gets in our lives. Some, it's a bitter root because sin always has bitter fruit at the end of the day. Others, and I tend to uh, side with them, see it as make sure no one falls short of the grace of God and that no bitter root grows up, a root of bitterness, to cause trouble and defile many. See, bitterness in us, falling short of the grace of God, we let bitterness get in our heart, which then eventually comes out through suboka, your mouth. And in your mind, bitter, bitter thoughts, bitter words, bitter. You ever meet someone bitter? Like the preacher said, some people look like they've been baptized in lemon juice. Just bitter. Not a very good advertisement, are we, for the Lord, Jesus Christ, when we're walking around with bitterness. Oh, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know in that church. You don't know my mother, my father, what they did. And I was, and the boss gave the promotion to the other. And I'm, and I'm bitter about this. And I'm bitter. That bitter root not only ruins your testimony and my testimony. It's not love, joy, peace, for sure, which is the fruit of the Spirit. So when someone bitter, God is not working in them along the line of the Spirit producing fruit. Love, joy, peace, and bitterness cannot travel together. But notice, it defiles many. You ever think about children who grow up in a bitter home? What a curse. Bitter conversation at dinner, bitter words, accusations, blaming the blame game, 
Everyone's held me back. I could have been. We had guys who played on the basketball team and they weren't in the starting team and they weren't in what's called the rotation. So they weren't the sixth, seventh, eighth man. They were ninth or 10th on the bench. They didn't get to play. I felt bad actually in warmups when I would see them is they basically knew they wouldn't see action in that game. The problem was some of them grew bitter. That coach, I can outplay that guy. And they became what's called a headache in the locker room because they would try to spread their bitterness, cause division, strife, all oh, bitterness. And we all have something to be bitter about. My dad started drinking when I was 12, beat my mother in front of me, beat me. Sometimes I, most times I deserved it, but sometimes I don't know what got a hold of him. I couldn't have friends over. He didn't go to my wedding. Well, he was my dad. And he was out of control. So should I be bitter the rest of my life? Oh, you grew up in a nice home with a mom and a dad and a dad was in church and, and all that. Does that make sense to anyone? We're bitter about past things that we can't change. How about looking at dressing today? Remember the old, old, old chorus? The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, oh really, fascinating lyrics. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's your strength, my strength, to have joy. We're gonna read about that later on in this chapter. God is not about bitterness. Pastors can be bitter. Why don't more people come to the church? Look at the offerings. What's wrong with you people? You ever hear a bitter sermon? No, it's about the Bible, but there's a root of uh, a tinge of bitterness because the, the, what's in the vessel is tainted by the vessel has, having a bitter covering, coating. I don't want to be bitter. I don't want to think about negative things. I have Jesus, you have Jesus, come on. He could come today. We're going home. Come on. It'll defile many. It can cause all. How many churches have been ruined by one bitter member? Let's have the joy of the Lord today as our strength. Bye-bye. See you next time. Mm -hmm.